excuse me. Have we started? Can I have some more light, please? All right. Uh, yes, thank you, and welcome to Evening Productions. I will be your host and narrator. Tonight, the subject is going to differ from the normal satire of your existence. Our star, Phil, like many of you, has had an upbringing that has made him sour to most experiences of his life. As a nice boy, Phil was smart and did well with most things. However, he cared very little for much that wasn't an immediate obligation. Yet he still managed to do well at most of these tedious obligations. Frankly, Phil, Phil was just the spitting image of what man wanted him to be. And aside from the monstrosities in his mind, his existence could be termed as... Righteous? This is disgusting. Just cut to the dead. <laughs> something with your time. What the hell? Where in God's name are the Nates? They're nearly 30 minutes late. They best not expect us to wait forever. Besides, that lid is not going to be hold it heated forever. Lucy! Calm down. <laughs> do you really care if they do come? Suppose they don't. How much do we actually have to lose, huh?
projection web. I'm sorry, Tom. You know, I still have Stanford and, and Yale, and there's still that. Sure. Sure, you're right. He's right. How's next? Got a few excuses on that for me? Say, what did I tell you, Philly? I was right once again. For you, a B is very bad. Still expect you at the same time? Great, great. Well, Lucy and I are very excited to meet this new fiance of yours. Lucy thinks it's Sarah Waldorf. I told her, no way. My blood wouldn't settle, right? Great, great. We'll find out soon enough.
I saw this handsome young man bidding on a new car, new car stereo, four thousand for a new radio. I had to ask him why he's paying so much for such a small luxury. He charmingly told me it's more about the cause than the luxury. Uh, overcome with curiosity, I asked about the coffee and things so weird from there. First, uh, first date, pick me up via carriage. And a woman said, "This is such a romantic." Well, I have no idea our boy was such a romantic. Did you know our boy was such a romantic? Yeah, yes. Of course. Join me. He really is a dream come true. That is very, really quite wonderful. You know, Dommy, I must ask. Have you heard those new rumors about the Jackson event? The, the most recent one I've heard, it's completely absurd. That baby. It's not hers. Can you believe that? It's true, I can. Celebrities are people too, Lucy. They have to get goodies to make the same mistakes just as we all do. In any case, I'm not sure I understand the fascination with following their personal lives. It, it all seems a little stalker-esque to me. Although I do hope best for the child, too many children are born under irresponsible circumstances these days. Honey, I left my purse in the car. Of course. In the back seat. I know that there was some hostility between us, Lucy, when I was married to David, but I just wanted to let you know that I forgot all about the old, regretted past and really look forward to spending a plentiful, beautiful future with your son. A toast to new beginnings. Selling it. I mean, having it all of our own will be 
great. Plus, I took back from Goldman Sachs. And you best believe they're all going to be trans transferred to a bank just in the city. Talk about good luck and timing, right? as hell is nice having someone tell me what to do. Look at me. 28, 8 years at Yale. I still need someone to tell me what to do with myself. You know, Philip? Responsibility to make my own decisions. I'm 28 now, Dad. When is that point going to be? You know what happens when she doesn't pay for the day. You want that? How feel like you want to marry a goddamn whore? She might be the most terribly selfish, manipulative one that I've ever met. She's poisoned.
Seems like things have heated up a bit, huh? <laughs> what a show we put on for you this evening. Am I right? No. Yeah. <laughs> now that day, Rick was rushed to the hospital to recuperate from his After knowing his father would live, Phil returned to the apartment that he shared with Dominique in New Haven. Shortly thereafter, the moron got married. However, it seems that despite his delivery, Rick's advice held true in Phil's case. Phil became more and more depressed as the days, weeks, months, and years went by. He was pathetically subservient to Dominique and felt the same sensation of being trapped that he'd known all through his life. As a result, Phil never disposed of that suicide letter. But that's enough for me. I can't spoil it all, or else, uh, you know, I would. But uh, let's see what happens next, huh? Not a chance. I'm calling you to see how it's been. I know Lizzie sent a few letters, but you know how wise can be. Tommy threw him out. Maybe to keep me happy, or I don't really know. I've been thinking a lot about the last time we saw each other. Tommy never told me how you knew all the things you did. I suppose I shouldn't ask too much, right? Is that something you talk about? Don't ask questions people don't want to hear. Keeps them happy, I suppose. Look, Pop, it, it really has been too long. I'd love if you got back to some guys.
anything, I promise. What could I have done? How about showing some freaking backbone for once in your life, huh? What about that? You're a coward, Phil. Did you know that? A coward. We're slow in condo. I might miss my parents for the weekend. Did you not hear a goddamn thing I said? You're a coward, Phil. A coward. Oh, the pity you, right? You're such a victim to yourself, oh, to your parents, to me. Well, cry me, a, cry me a river. We're not selling a goddamn thing. Why don't you make, ever make a goddamn stand for yourself, Phil? What the hell did you expect? But for people to walk all over you. Never say, you never say a word in opposition, never defend yourself. I married a money wash with a pathetic, spoiled little brat. Did you not hear me? Please, get out of my house. 